Hello and welcome. My name is Laura Bix and on behalf of the Strategic Planning Committee of the School of Packaging at Michigan State University and the faculty at Michigan State University, I'd like to welcome you to this podcast which represents a synopsis of our ongoing strategic planning efforts that began in July of 2014. Before we get started, we would like to formally thank Ajit Srivastava, the current chair of Biosystems and Agricultural Engineering Program here on campus. He has provided a lot of impartial insight, guidance, and wisdom throughout this process. Additionally, we'd like to acknowledge and thank uh, Dr. Susan Selke, who has stepped up in the um, interim chair position since October of this year. These efforts really have touched all facets of the faculty. Um, we are a small group and several ad hoc committees were uh, spun off of this effort. Basically every single faculty member within the school has been involved in some of these uh, different efforts. In terms of the agenda today, the challenges facing the school are not linear. They're very complicated and sort of interwoven. So all Although the agenda is linear in nature, the presentation is not. But by the end of the talk, I anticipate that you will understand the challenges and problems that we face, some of the goals that we've set for ourselves, uh, the analysis that we did to develop an action plan, which will come at the end. After the presentation, Susan Selke will put the uh, planning sort of into the context of the broader scheme of the School of Packaging and answer any questions that you may have. To really understand the challenges that we face, you have to understand the mission of the university and the charge that all of us working here are faced with. And that specifically at Michigan State is to advance knowledge and transform lives through three primary mechanisms. The first is probably the most obvious of those mechanisms, and that's by teaching. Specifically, we are charged with providing outstanding educational experiences to undergraduates, graduates, and professional students that will develop them into engaged community leaders. <clears throat> Secondly, we're embedded within a research intensive institution, and so a big part of our mission is to generate new knowledge. Specifically, we need to conduct research that seeks to answer questions and create solutions that not only expand human understanding, but then can be parlayed into a positive difference. And the way that we make that positive difference is through outreach. So we take these new, these new pieces of knowledge, these innovative solutions that we've come up with to better quality of lives for our individuals and our communities. Late last year, um, the upper administration at Michigan State recognized that we were having difficulties achieving excellence across all three aspects of the mission. Specifically, um, what was happening is historically we've been around 500 students, 450 to 500 students, and around 2012 we started to see rapid increases in our student numbers. During the same time period, we started to see declining resources. And so the good news is that if you look there, one of the major contributors to this increase is incoming freshmen that are declaring packaging as major. And so I would assert that this is very positive and that it, it says that as a discipline, we are evolving into a mechanism or a way that students see uh, a successful future, a successful career, and they're declaring very early on. But the challenge is that those increasing numbers and in times of declining resources have, uh, have drained the resources that we do have. And what happens is we turn increasingly to things like automated assessments or Scantron types of exams and additionally, the, the other aspects of the mission, research and outreach, suffer uh, because we become burnt in our teaching. And so we were charged uh, as a faculty to address this problem, to, to develop balance across the mission, but to also sort of plan for our future strategically. We met and we boiled the problem into basically five different bullets. 
that a lack of an articulated vision had led to the perception that packaging was not an area of scholarship that leads to fundamental and applied research. That student enrollment is increasing rapidly while resources have declined, that our uh, curriculum lacks rigor, and that we have noted and documented low research productivity as a unit. In a nutshell, we had inadequate resources to meet expectations across the mission. Now, I further boiled this into four flags that you'll see throughout the presentation um, just to help you kind of keep, keep up with where I'm trying to address or where we're trying to address different aspects of the problem, where we're doing different analyses. We also set some goals for the planning committee, and that was specifically to decrease faculty teaching load, to enhance program rigor and efficiency, and really to reinvigorate and redefine packaging within the academy, uh, as well as to increase our research productivity. So if we, if we met and we arbitrarily put regulators on the curriculum, such as increased entry requirements to reduce student numbers, but we didn't do that in a thoughtful, meaningful way that implemented those regulators throughout the curriculum, we would really be missing an opportunity to address the stakeholders' needs and produce the types of students that they needed. And so we wanted to seize this opportunity not just to direct, um, to marshal resources and catalyze alignment across the mission, but really to direct the future of the school and in some ways the discipline in a meaningful way. The process that we used to do that, um, this wasn't our first rodeo. We have done strategic planning documents in the past, and the committee uh, gathered all those documents and put them into a cloud space where they could be accessed by all. We met once a week from the period uh, of the end of July until even now. Um, we held periodic meetings with the, all of the faculty not only to provide updates and seek input, but also to seek their assistance and help through different ad hoc committees that I already mentioned. Um, as I mentioned before, the historical documents, many of which were uh, drafted with stakeholder input, were used, and we had this sort of two-pronged and integrated approach. We wanted, one, a strategy for achieving balance and excellence across the mission, but we also, maybe more importantly, want to articulate a guiding vision for the future. In terms of the critical milestone dates in the planning, we had our first update of the Packaging Alumni Association on uh, September 25th of 2014, and we provided a skeletal document framing our direction forward to the Dean's office on October 15th. We met with the advisory committee to provide them an update regarding the planning process on October 24th, and we sent a complete document to the Dean's office on December 15th. Today marks our um, letting the stakeholder in general, you guys know um, where we're at in this process and what our current thinking is. So one of the first things our impartial uh, facilitator mentioned, uh, Dr. Shavasava, is he said, we sit in a research intensive institution and you really need to explain why a, a field like packaging belongs at a research intensive university. Now, as someone with three degrees from the, this program, from the School of Packaging at MSU, um, that was a little hard to sit with at first. It's basically, you know, justify your your worth within the academy. Um, but as I sat with that for a while and thought about it, I, I thought about all the different people that I've met that are trained in more traditional fields, um, toxicology, medicine. And anytime I meet someone like that, they're like, packaging, how can you get a PhD in packaging? But then after I talk to them about it, they are usually um, very open to it and, and think that it's a very valuable contribution and they see its value. And so as we talked about it, we thought, well, one of the things that we probably need to do um, to, with regard to the upper administration is better explain to them how we are positioned in science. And so one of the first things that we did was we created a definition of packaging as a science. 
and we said packaging is an interdisciplinary field integrating science, engineering, technology, and management to protect and identify products for distribution, storage, sale, and use. It encompasses the process of design, evaluation, and production. Packaging is a system integral to the value chain that Im impacts product quality, users, distribution efficiencies, and safety. And so what we're trying to do is explain to them that we are an interdisciplinary field that integrates from the natural sciences to the applied sciences. After that, we turned our attention to the mission of, of the school, and this is probably nothing uh, novel to you. This has been uh, in, in some form another or another in many of the different documents that have been produced by the school. But our mission is to educate packaging professionals to create innovative solutions that enhance or maintain product quality, increase efficiency, and reduce waste. And in doing so, we contribute to the economic development and quality of life of citizens within the state and across the world through highly relevant educational experiences and cutting edge research. Given that we created, and, and there was a lot of discussion and formulation, a lot of uh, self-reflection and looking at what we had done historically, who our stakeholders were, we created three broad platforms on which we could build a focus. Um, we meant to sharpen the focus across all sectors of the mission to make purf purposeful changes in curriculum, research, and outreach. And the mechanism for integration of the work that occurs across this mission is to create a critical mass within each specific topic. So the three broad scholarly platforms that we're going to narrow our focus from are food, health, and biomedical packaging, packaging materials and sustainability, packaging distribution and value chain. From there, we wanted to do kind of a reality check. We said, if these are our three broad platforms, do we have any kind of historical uh, wisdom or critical mass in those areas? And one of the things that we used was data to, to sort of go, okay, yes, we, we think we do. We accessed a system called MSU Scholars, which tracks all peer review publications of faculty on staff at MSU. And based on journal titles, we counted how many um, publications we had, peer review publications, within each of the broad scholarly platforms. And you can see there that we have a decent mass around each of those. Um, 170 in the packaging distribution and value chain, 325 in materials and sustainability, and 202 in health and biomedical packaging. So with that, we said, okay, we do have some level of competence here um, and moved forward with the three platforms as proposed. So in terms of the broad sort of um, means of achieving excellence in teaching, we had three uh, broad means to do so. One was to regulate or limit, limit undergraduate student numbers to do an analysis that would determine uh, our needs for instructional personnel and kind of benchmark where we're at right now. And also, we, again, wanted to be very forward thinking in what we were doing. So we didn't want to just arbitrarily bring those numbers into a better balance, but we wanted to do it in a purposeful, meaningful way um, that was to the benefit not only of the school, uh, but also the people that hire our students and our future. And so we also looked at, at reinventing the curriculum here and continue to do so. So in terms of the analysis of what's going on uh, here, we used 2013-2014 uh, school year data uh, to kind of analyze how we stacked up against the theoretical average college department. And so you'll see in that first row there, uh, in the in the light blue color, that is the theoretical average of CANR of our college. So the average department has 22 faculty, and in 2013-2014 school year, we had 12.2. So we're at about 55% of the average. I won't beleaguer all of these numbers, um, but I would like to call your attention to the 
the student to faculty ratio, the college average is 16 to 1, so 16 students to each faculty. We're at the School of Packaging, we're at uh, 58 if you use the 2013 to 2014 data, or 73 if you use our, our current numbers. Um, we carry uh, 256, almost 257 percent of the student credit hours per faculty as compared to the college average. Now the number that tends to get a lot of attention within the college is our grant dollars per faculty, where the average uh, average faculty within the, our college uh, makes brings in about a quarter of a million dollars a year in grant funding. Our program brings in about fifty-three thousand dollars a year in grant funding, so we're at roughly one fifth of the college average. So we kind of looking at this and comparing ourselves to other departments, we did a series of different analyses. Some of the analyses were revenue-based, others we built a model that considered the types of classes that we had, were they laboratory, were they lecture, uh, were there TAs, all of that kind of thing. These analyses, even when you consider 450 students, undergraduate students in the program, so that would be a significant reduction from where we're at now, which is about 893 students. Even when you consider that number of students, the analyses converged on the idea that we needed 12.5 full-time equivalents in teaching. And so that doesn't mean 12.5 people. I mentioned before that we have a three-pronged mission, that is teaching, outreach, and research. Um, my appointment, for instance, is 35% teaching, which means I should be roughly spending 35% of my time in teaching endeavors. So when we add up the teaching portion of our assignments, our faculty has 7.15 teaching faculty. The analysis suggests we need 12.5. Uh, so in a nutshell, what's happening is we're being basically consumed um, and lacking the ability to sort of ideate and innovate because we're being consumed by one portion of the mission, and that is the, the teaching portion. So we've turned our attention to managing undergraduate student enrollment numbers, and the goal here is to reduce undergraduate numbers to approximately 125 per class um, freshman, junior, sophomore, senior. <laughs> we want to engage them earlier, and so they're engaged in our curriculum throughout their time here. Um, currently, they're admitted at 56 credits. That's a, a junior level status. We're looking to admit at 28 credits. Um, we're also looking at enhancing the GPA requirements, and in fact, the GPA, uh, the current GPA is 2.9. Um, for admission uh, as a declared major, and possibly 3.0 in the fall of 2015, depending on where the numbers are at. We've already increased the math requirement. Math 132 and Math 133 are now required for admission to the program. And we'll also look at having, that's Calc 1 and 2. Um, We'll also look at having our admitted majors, our early classes, specifically packaging 221, only allow admitted majors. And so the physical seats within the class um, become a valve, if you will, uh, for, for entry into the rest of the program. In addition, as I mentioned before, we'd be missing a real opportunity if we were doing all this work just to change the numbers. But we want to change things in a meaningful, uh, forward-thinking way. And so we've also looked at curricular revisions. One of the curricular revisions that is being proposed is using concentrations um, within the within the curriculum and so each student would have a, a specialization or a concentration of sorts which we believe uh, 
coincides very well with the way our students are hired. They would be either a packaging science major, that would be positions like R&D, wet, wet lab type of people, uh, a packaging engineering major, or a packaging management major, and people like sales, procurement, um, marketing, management would come out of that type of track. Additionally, we've been working to revise the undergraduate curriculum. Several years ago, we worked with external stakeholders with our industrial advisory committee to create a set of learning objectives. Uh, faculty within the school were asked to assess uh, where they believed our program was delivering on all of those learning objectives and where it should deliver on all of those learning objectives. Um, and this was done against what's called a revised Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom's taxonomy basically says that students can do sort of very fundamental types of things like list, regurgitate, remember, all the way up to uh, creation of, of something new and innovative. And so faculty were asked on a scale of zero to seven to actually rate where our program were meeting the varied learning objectives um, and where they believed they should meet the, the varied learning objectives. And then a gap analysis was done to see where were we over delivering with the curriculum and where, where were the gaps that needed to be improved. Based on that and the Bloom's tax, revised Bloom's taxonomy, um, we have this very broad roadmap for curricular revision, where we build from foundational prerequisites um, to packaging fundamentals, again, those sort of lower level tasks of learning, all the way up to a capstone experience um, with hopefully more design and synthesis uh, analysis and evaluation and innovation uh, scattered throughout. Again, there will be uh, three concentrations, science, engineering, and management, and those students will have six packaging credits specific to their concentration and nine other credits plus some additional credits for the engineering track. So we also, of course, a lot of this is about research as well. And so we also looked at strategies for enhancing research and catalyzing innovation for our program uh, with two broad objectives in mind, to strengthen the graduate program and identify the richest opportunities for interdisciplinary collaboration. <clears throat> in terms of strengthening the graduate program, uh, several, several different approaches have been proposed and are at various stages of implementation. Um, we will have additional courses from allied fields for PhD students with um, members of outside allied fields uh, working with them closely. Uh, we've already had a fellowship call uh, to try to recruit top-notch PhD students. That first call was due in early January. Um, we are taking two of our existing courses and merging them into a single course uh, that it will be required of all graduate students. Those two courses are, um, are a seminar course that we currently offer and the ethics course will be merged into research methodology and ethics course. Additionally, we will have um, firm dates for our qualifier and comprehensive exams and we're going to start implementing uh, publication requirements at both the graduate uh, or master's and PhD level. That done, we turned our attention to trying to identify the richest opportunities for interdisciplinary collaboration. And to do so, we held something called the PAC Vision 2020 workshop that was held on November 20th of 2014. The objectives of that workshop were threefold. We wanted to develop a clearer focus in each of the three strategic platforms that could be used to inform the path forward. We wanted to identify opportunities that would produce the greatest results or have the biggest impact. And we wanted to identify and facilitate collaboration, collaborations that were needed for opportunities. So we did a sort of gap analysis in terms of who are the faculty here on campus that we could collaborate with 
and who was what types of expertise was needed to drive in the directions that we wanted to go. We sent out an invitation to faculty across campus and 45 faculty attended from five different colleges. Um, discussion, guided discussion occurred at each of three tables or four tables around the, the different platforms that we'd had. And we distilled that discussion uh, into 12 different research areas. The 12 research areas were subsequently sent out to our industrial advisory committee and the packaging uh, alumni board. And they were asked for um, how they perceive the areas to be in terms of societal significance, alignment with university initiatives, and the probability of external funding. It was also sent out to the faculty um, and external responses and faculty responses were kept separately so that we could look at similarities and differences between the two. Um, this was sent out actually the weekend of Thanksgiving. We've, we've been working very hard and, and fast and furiously. Um, we got a, actually a 50% response rate, which we're, we're very grateful for. Um, we took that feedback and we distilled it even further into um, nine different areas uh, that we felt like offered uh, great potential for impact. And then we boiled those into areas where packaging could take a leadership role and areas where packaging would take more of a collaborative role. We overlaid that against the strategic platforms for scholarship that we had previously mentioned. These were further used to inform discussion and narrow sort of the, the trajectories into initiatives and needed expertise um, in future meetings then. So in those future meetings, three strategic initiatives uh, emerged. And not only did we take the feedback from the uh, SurveyMonkey results and what we had heard at the PAC Vision 2020 workshop, but we also took information from um, many global, uh, global organizations and agencies within the United States, such as the National Science Foundation and the UN, as we sort of honed our trajectory further. The three st strategic initiatives that emerged were enhancing patient-centered healthcare through integrated packaging systems, designing sustainable smart materials and packaging systems, assuring quality, safety, and nutrition in packaged food and preventing loss. Given that, we looked on campus to see what types of expertise were needed to address these global sort of mega trend types of issues and what we had to offer and what was needed. These are the expertise that we boiled that to. Uh, polymer chemist, risk assessment and management and packaging, food packaging engineering, and that's actually two different pieces of expertise, one in modeling and one in analysis. Food packaging chemist, toxicologist, human pa factors and packaging systems, end of life of packaging polymers and materials, packaging distribution and value chain, Food packaging engineering, specifically systems design, bio and nano sensors for packaging systems, and a computational chemist physicist position, as well as packaging innovation and design additive manufacturing. So we knew that we needed um, expertise, and we had done some analysis previous that suggested sort of how many we needed. Um, with regard to how, how this was informed, we looked at, we know that we're going to be a teaching intensive unit. Um, we believe that we'll probably be a, a student to faculty ratio of around 20 to one. If we cut our student numbers from 893 to 450, and we add eight tenure system faculty, and two fixed term faculty. So we add a total of 10 positions. We will still be at a student to faculty ratio of 20 to one. 
that's still above the university average and the college average of 16 to 1. Just to give you an idea of the types of workloads we're facing in teaching right now. And so our plan for the future is to add three tenure system faculty and one fixed term faculty in the first year of the plan. To add three tenure system faculty and one fixed term faculty in the second year of the plan. To add two tenure system faculty in the third year of the plan. And we've projected um, the undergraduate enrollment here for you uh, calculated the undergraduate student to tenure system ratio uh, as well as a rising graduate enrollment uh, during that time frame. But it won't just be faculty resources that we will need. Um, there's also going to be significant needs for infrastructure around the plan. Specifically, uh, we will need to renovate our classrooms. We will need um, lab space and office space for new faculty and new graduate students. And so significant additions and renovations to the infrastructure and equipment will be required to implement the plan. We have um, a two-pronged approach to this. One, we have the Building Revisions Committee, which is currently underway and discussing renovations and revisions to the building throughout. Um, specifically, we are looking at major renovations of Room 100 that will not only allow for more flexible pedagogy, more flexibility in teaching delivery, and enhanced wow in that room, but also improve safety as well. We're looking at adding more hoteling and teaming spaces throughout the building so that our um, classes, which heavily leverage uh, team projects, have actual physical spaces that, that uh, allow for that method or, or actually are friendly to that method. We're looking at additions to the front and the back of the building with increased office spaces for both graduate students and new faculty. And we're really hoping that our building will tell our story, that it will explain how we can be a discipline at the intersection of art and science and really convey all the cool things that we do here and all the cool things that our uh, former students go out into the world and achieve. Um, we're also working with the college to identify underutilized spaces that are located within the university that could be leveraged close to the different collaborators that, that we have and we're developing. But it's going to take a lot. It's going to take all of us. And so one of the ways that we can do that is through the Empower Extraordinary campaign. And specifically, that campaign's motive is to enable dreams of faculty and students and propel the university into one of the world's leading research institutions. So building renovations, endowed chairs, equipment donations, um, renovations to laboratory space, all of that will need to happen. The Dean has endorsed um, our plan. Uh, he was kind enough to write a foreword for the plan as it moves forward within the university system. And he has indicated that he is, will be working with the associate deans, the directors, and the stakeholders to secure the resources that we need to um, help achieve our future goals. And so with that, I would like to turn the mic over to Dr. Susan Selke, our acting director of the School of Packaging, who will put um, some context around this plan for you and also answer the questions that have come in during the course of the presentation. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to, to thank Laura and the rest of the Strategic Planning Committee for all the, the work that has gone into this effort. Uh, they're charting a pathway forward for us. As that indicates, the, the strategic plan is, is laying out a destination. It's laying out the pathway to get to that destination and the resources that we need to, to get there. The, the research focus is an essential part of this plan. That's what advances the discipline of packaging and keeps the education that we provide up to date. But the plan isn't a detailed roadmap. The road doesn't exist to get to the destination. We have to build the road. 
there's going to be obstacles to deal with, there's going to be opportunities that come along. And those are going to result in changes in the plan. And we're, we want feedback from you, from our stakeholders. So all of that is, is going to impact what exactly this road looks like. We've, we've started building the road already because we have challenges that we have to face right now. We're going to come out of this better and stronger. We want your feedback. We really need your help and support. And I hope that, that people are paying attention to the opportunity to ask questions because that's where we're going right now. And I see questions are starting to come in. Uh, one comment first before we get right into the questions. We've had over 150 people on this webinar. So in case you were wondering how, how many people were listening, uh, we don't have an exact count, but it is over 150. All right, so looking at, at questions. Um, one, of the, one of the questions was how online teaching plays into the need to address being able to free up faculty to do research. And that's a challenge. But the online program is very important to us. It's not going to go away. Uh, we, we know it meets the needs of, of many of you for advanced education and packaging. And uh, if, if the underlying message was, uh, do we need to be concerned about this disappearing? The answer is no. Uh, another question is, how does the reduction of undergrad students compare to other competing schools of packaging? MSU has always been known as the biggest and best for packaging schools. From what I hear from at least some other programs, they're growing too. And they're going to be facing their own challenges. We're not talking about becoming small. We're, we're talking about continuing to graduate about 125 students a year if the plan goes forward as it is. Uh, in the future, if we have more resources, maybe we'll even be able to increase that number. We'll see when the time comes. So I think we're, we're still going to be the biggest. I know we're going to be the best. Sorry, looking at questions here. Um, next question was, what is the current status of the Industrial Advisory Committee? Who's representative? Who is represented and are representatives from additional fields needed? The advisory committee was reformulated a little bit to include representatives of some organizations, so it's not just industry. It, it is alive and well. And uh, with my terrible memory, I can't tell you right now who's on it without leaving off some important people. So I'll, I'll skip that part. Um, one question that may be of interest to other people is someone asked if the presentation will be available for download, and the answer to that is yes. How will the School of Packaging obtain, <laughs> I'm sorry, my question disappeared from in front of me, the financial support to add the additional faculty? That, obviously, money is always a challenge. The, the dean has indicated that, uh, that there is, is support for getting us additional resources. Conversations will be had with, with the upper administration as well. And uh, as, as the plan indicated, we're not asking for everything all at once. That would not be feasible. We are, we are going to be looking to our stakeholder community to help with some of the resource needs. It's not just salary money that's needed for faculty. It's also equipment and supplies and all the other things that go into to getting someone started in, in research. I'm having trouble negotiating the questions here. I'm sorry about that. Uh, question was, where does grant money come from? We get grant money from a variety of sources. Uh, some of it comes from government agencies. Some of it comes from companies. 
Some of it comes from organizations like foundations. And we want to maintain a, a balance of different types of funding. Okay, another question is, since the placement rate is so high, is there a concern that the School of Packaging will lose predominance in packaging? Um, our, our placement rate is high, and that, that helps us with, with predominance. I'm, I'll confess I'm not quite understanding that question. Uh, another question is, does the School of Packaging hope or have plans to seek funding assistance from corporate sponsors? I think I just answered that. We, we do want a balance of types of funding, uh, government corporations and foundations where appropriate. Uh, there's a question, how will the new requirement for graduate students such as publication impact the online degree? Uh, first of all, a, a lot of the details of the new requirements are still up for discussion. The, the publication requirement was intended for the thesis degree, the thesis option for the master's. The online program is a non-thesis option and there would not be any publication requirement for that program. Another question is, will the school be drawing from various industries to fill any faculty positions? The tenure system faculty positions always require a doctorate. Uh, industry experience is obviously very valuable for, for positions like that. So um, that, that could happen. But, but people, again, for the tenure system positions will have to have the advanced degree. Um, okay, a question is, since there will be fewer students in the pool of candidates for, for co-op positions, is there any consideration being given to expand the co-op program to include more than one co-op rotation per student? You would then have less students attending classes at any one time. Uh, we, we, we refer to these internally as internship positions and students are already have the option of doing more than one internship. I don't see that changing. Uh, Question, do we have other packaging programs represented on the advisory committee? We have had a, a, represent, a representative of the um, IPI program out of Switzerland. Uh, another question, if there's still a shortage of packaging resources in the marketplace, wouldn't we be better served to embrace a higher volume of undergrads and hire even more resources? It seems that the massive checks we write for tuition might cover this and it would allow us to continue to be the dominant school, or am I not doing the math correctly? Uh, that's, that's a great question that uh, maybe brings out the, the difference between academia and industry. If, if you produce more output, if you, sell, if you sell more products, you get more revenue coming in. If we produce more undergrads, we don't get more revenue coming in. So there is, simply put, the way the university system functions, there is not a direct tie between the resources that we get and the amount of students we have. The, the president of the university has made it clear that, the, that Michigan State University can't afford to supply the needs of the whole United States for packaging professionals. Um, question, how will current faculty be doing more research with student credit hours so high? How can this be achieved? Uh, that's fundamentally why the student numbers have to go down in order for research productivity to get closer to where it needs to be. Uh, 
Um, another question, I saw a lot of focus on the on food packaging and future research and teaching. How about pharmaceutical and biofarm packaging? There, there is a there is going to be a, a variety of types of different research. Food packaging is one of the important components. MSU has a strong emphasis on food safety, food security, food availability right now. And we, we need to, to be prepared to, to bring the packaging component that can greatly enhance that research focus. That doesn't mean the other areas won't be there. Another question was, will the school have an admission enrollment cap? Uh, we actually were given the opportunity to at least temporarily put a cap on enrollment. Our judgment was that in, in many ways that's not the fairest way to treat students we want to communicate to them what they have to achieve to be able to be admitted to the school as, as a full-fledged packaging major. So we're trying to manage enrollment through these, these less direct measures than drawing a line arbitrarily and saying, if you're above that line, we want you, and if you're below that line, you have to go away. Oh, there is a question about the concentration areas. It says they're very interesting. At what point will students be able to select a concentration? And can you provide examples of what the courses will look like? Check back in with us later. Uh, that, that's under discussion. That's in, in the details of implementation. And uh, that's part of the road we're building. Uh, question, uh, I may have missed it, had to step away. Are there plans for physical placement of any new faculty derived from this initiative? At the same time as this strategic plan, there is also a plan going forward for, for renovation and potential expansion of the building. So we, we will be out there fundraising because we do need to improve the physical facilities to be able to accomplish what, what we need and want to do. Um, question, what dollars are needed to endow positions? Is that part of the strategy? Consideration of donations large enough to name the school, what would that take? Uh, that's a great question. And the, the um, Kimberly, help me with the, the advance, university advancement. Is that the right? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not up on the current terminology. University advancement will help with all those questions. Uh, question, what specific packaging areas will the school focus research on in the future? Uh, we, we laid those out to some extent in the the directions that were, were overlaid on the three circles and the immediate areas that we're pressing forward for, for in, in doing new things are outlined in, in the initiatives that were talked about. Uh, question, what drove the enrollment up so dramatically? That's, a, that's another wonderful question that we don't entirely know the answer to. It appears that the word has gotten out that, that packaging is, is a profession where you can do very interesting work, where you can go out and get a good job, and that Michigan State is a good place to do that. Uh, Kimberly is pointing out to me that, that Brent Musburger, when ESPN was here, said something about uh, major in packaging and you'll get a job. Uh, informal feedbacks of our incoming freshmen says that that's not really how they heard about it, but we have our suspicions sometimes. Um, 
how do you adapt and keep curricula fresh in the new log rate changes we all face daily in the engineering sciences? What tools and peer review groups outside of MSU do you draw upon to help discern what beyond the basics is chosen and is germane to place more on demand? How do you stay facile? Um, that's part of the answer, and that's a complicated question. A lot of the answer is the interface between the research mission and the education mission. In the research mission of the school is where we are discovering new knowledge and bringing that to the classroom, bringing that to the teaching mission. Of course, we do pay attention to what other people in the world are, are doing also. Uh, that's part of research too. You have to, you have to learn from others and um, for specific groups that that's going to depend very much on what the, the particular area is. Uh, question, has anyone addressed where will the students who would normally study packaging go within MSU? There are a number of majors at Michigan State University, the majority of majors at the university are not enrollment limited. So there are places for students to go. Where exactly they will go will depend on what their interests are. They'll find the best fit. How many, how many freshmen declaring pack, the packaging major are children of packaging alumni? Uh, we certainly have some. I don't know what the count is. Uh, it's a minority for sure, probably a fairly small minority, but a growing one as there's more of you out there having kids who think what you're doing is, is interesting. They, they come back to us. See, I'm looking for questions that, that I, I may have missed. Uh, what type of physical resources are going to be required and what is the estimated cost? Uh, the, the plans are being worked up right now. Uh, we haven't gotten the cost figures yet. Um, the, the university advancement is, is going to be talking to prospective donors about specifics after the numbers are in. See, I'm I'm scrolling through here um, to see what I what I may have missed. Uh, will there be any adjunct professors required to fulfill the vision in each technical area? Uh, that's a possibility. We'll we'll see as we move forward. Uh, has President Simon reviewed this plan, and is she supportive? Uh, the, the plan is working its way through the, the administrative hierarchy. The, the next stop is the provost. And because of some scheduling difficulties, that hasn't quite happened yet. Uh, I, the president certainly is aware that, uh, that the, the plan is, has, has been submitted. And we hope she's going to be supportive. We'll find out. Um, what is the status of the SLP building renovation project? Uh, I think I pretty much answered that. The architects are working on it. Um, I'm told we have time for one more question. Um, any plans to include polymer extrusion fundamentals in the new plan? Uh, we, we continue to do more of that than we have done before. Uh, part of the plan is expansion of laboratories and there, there is considerable interest in, in some, some better extrusion facilities. Uh, again, the, the details have yet to be developed. And with that, I think we are out of time. If you submitted a question that we didn't get to, we will respond to you by email. 
again, the, the presentation has been recorded, so there will be information on the website for those of you who would like to, to hear it again or, or for those for people who, who missed it and want to tune in later. Thank you very much for attending, for your interest, and we'll be here if you want to come visit us. <laughs>